I wanted to make a comment on this video here on the Atheist Antidote 2 channel, but wasn't able to for some reason. Uh, so instead, I've decided to put together a video response of my own. Mr. Lolly's video, An Atheist Fly in Our Chicken Soul Soup, points to thought, memory, and consciousness as evidence for a human soul. I've put together this video to point out the errors in his evidence and his conclusions. His first point is that thought is immaterial and beyond matter. This, however, is not true, as thoughts can be detected and even measured. Neurologists use electroencephalograms to measure brain activity, and EEGs can now be used to write out sentences just from people's thoughts. Brain-computer interfaces have been developed to assist people with injuries or disabilities by linking external machines and sensory devices directly to these people's brains. Without being able to link a person's thought processes and brain activity, this would not be possible. Mr. Lolly then states that being injured means you can't think as you once did, proving that thought is a product of matter and dependent upon it. Well, this is true, but it is counter to his statement earlier that thought is immaterial and beyond matter. I understand he's making the point that a material thing such as the brain is responsible for something immaterial such as thought, but since thought has been shown to not be immaterial, this point is irrelevant. Mr. Lolly uses a computer and its hardware and software as a comparison to the human brain. Damage the hardware, the software still exists. Damage the brain, and the soul remains intact. Unfortunately, software is still a physical thing, or at least it has physical properties, which it requires to manifest itself into the program or application being used. It is a series of ones and zeros, on and off positions, and if you damage that information, it's useless. The brain is the same way. Damage the goods inside it, and the software, memory, motor control, sensory recognition, becomes inoperable. Mr. Lolly also discusses what he calls the thread of consciousness, and that our consciousness and memory are common sense proof of our souls. Mr. Lolly then points to the molecular makeup of our brains and bodies changing year to year, yet the enduring nature of our memories and consciousness that we can pull up at any part of our life's thread is more evidence for our souls. Well, common sense doesn't really lead to any of these conclusions, and a little understanding of how the brain works leads in the opposite direction of them. For starters, Having memories proves that we are able to remember events and experiences that have happened to us in the past. Any further conclusions from this are derived from other beliefs and biases, and not from the memories and the mechanisms behind it. I'm not a neurologist, and I won't be able to give a lecture on how memory functions, but I know it is complex, that different types of memories are stored in different ways, and that the science on memory is not complete. At this point, though, I urge a few words of caution to anyone looking to use the lack of a complete understanding of memory in the brain as evidence for God or a soul. Like it has for earthquakes, solar eclipses, and disease, science continues to erode the nooks and crannies that religion has used to hide and is a dangerous path to claim that a lack of comprehension on a subject is evidence for divinity. On the contrary, science behind memory, in particular the recent growth in the understanding of memory, leads any unbiased thinker to believe that there is nothing supernatural about our memories or our minds. As for dissecting the human body and looking for a soul, the way you would dissect an iPod looking for music, the question is worded incorrectly. You would dissect a human body looking for memories and all the aspects of a brain that would otherwise seem divine, and you would find them, much in the same way you would find all the ones and zeros collected in an iPod making up its music collection. Continuing briefly on this subject, Mr. Lolly points to our ability to recall and experience any moment along the thread of our consciousness again and again as evidence of an enduring soul. This is interesting, but not good evidence. While we might be able to recall previous events and experiences, these recollections are not accurate, even without injury or disease impairing our recollections. Memories are not static things. Our brains change and degrade over time. And while they don't replenish themselves the way the rest of our body does, new brain cells through neurogenesis are created and it is believed that these cells are meant specifically for learning and memory. Memories are physical, non-enduring attributes of the mind, and are not evidence of an immortal soul. With regards to matter being indestructible, it isn't. However, it is not unreasonable to think a spirit or a soul is indestructible. Since there is no evidence for its existence, you can think whatever you like about it, hypothesizing its color, shape, favorite movie, etc. I understand bringing up this point is logical if you believe there is evidence for the existence of a soul, but since there isn't, trying to define any attributes a soul might have is meaningless. Finally, Mr. Lolly asks, if we are soulless walking dead, 
what is the purpose of our longings in life? Why do we have limitless capacities for curiosity, love, gathering knowledge, and experience? And isn't it strange that we have these powerful instincts universally amongst us, yet they serve no purpose for those of us who think there is no purpose in life? Well, this is at the heart of every Christian's issue with atheism. What's the point? To begin with, when you start with the assumption that the opposing view requires people to be described as soulless walking dead, the likelihood of you ever accurately comprehending their argument is very small. I too would give up atheism if I thought of myself as a soulless walking dead person and would search for something more meaningful. Fortunately, no atheistic person thinks that way. But what about these longings? From a basic and hard evolutionary standpoint, these urges exist within us to improve our abilities to pass on our genes. But of course, no person, atheist or religious, tackles life with the goal of passing on their genes alone. We don't marry our husbands and wives only to have babies. We don't eat and drink just to meet our nutritional requirements. And we don't take our prescribed breaks and vacations so that we can operate at peak physical and mental capacities. We do these things because they are fun, because we enjoy them, and because these things unto themselves bring meaning and purpose into our lives. Learning feels good. Loving feels good. Our brains are wired to release chemicals that make us feel rewarded when we solve a problem, learn something new, or overcome an obstacle. Knowledge and experience make us feel better as we receive them and continue to improve our lives once we have them, making us more comfortable, confident, and happier. So yes, there is a purpose to our lives, and there is meaning and reason behind these longings. Without these urges, we would indeed likely be soulless walking dead, as you describe. But from any point of view, religious or not, evolutionary or not, these longings are a great thing, and they help define who each of us are.